All right, today we're going over the easiest way to remember the rotator cuff muscles, plus we're going to cover actions and insertions for good measure too. Those are things you're going to want to know as well. So to start off with the rotator cuff is a group of four muscles and their tendons that come together to create a cuff around the humeral head to provide stability and of course move the arm around. So right here we have the humerus and of course this is the scapula where all four of these muscles originate from. So the easiest way to remember the names of these muscles is with the acronym SITS. So let's go one by one and fill out this acronym together. So to start off with, up here we have the supraspinatus, and it's called the supraspinatus because supra, meaning above or superior to, the spine of the scapula. So if you see this bony outcropping right here, this is the spine of the scapula, and the supraspinatus is just named because it's above that spine. So the infraspinatus below here is basically named for the same reason, infra meaning inferior or below that spine, so that's why it's called the infraspinatus. The teres minor is this small muscle right here, also part of the rotator cuff, and basically intertwined with the infraspinatus. This model does show some other muscles, but I don't want to get into that. I don't want to confuse anybody. So let's just turn around and get to the subscapularis. So this muscle right here is the big subscapularis, and it's called subscapularis because sub means under or beneath. So you can think of um, like a submarine is below the water, underneath the water. The subscap is below or underneath the scapula. All right, let's go into the actions and insertions. So I do have a few stories to help you kind of memorize these things. Once you get a little more accustomed to it, it'll kind of come naturally to you. But when you're just starting out, these stories will kind of help you remember everything real easy. So let's start with the subscapularis. As you can tell, the subscap is the only muscle on this side of the scapula. So I kind of think of him, he's kind of like a guy that lives alone in a basement, kind of a sub dweller, if you will. He's all alone and he's very introverted. So I think introverted because his main action is internal rotation. So I kind of mix those two together. Since he likes to be alone, he's also the only muscle that attaches to the lesser tubercle of the humeral head. So all the other rotator cuff muscles attach to the greater tubercle. They want to be in the greater spot, you know, the best place in the shoulder. They want to all come together and party. But the subscapularis, he's a loner, okay? So he doesn't want to go toward all the noises, all the action. He'll just, he's fine with going to the lesser tubercle of the humerus. So I think of him as a loner, and that reminds me of the lesser tubercle. He's the only muscle that attaches there. So while the subscapularis is very introverted, on the other side of the scapula, we have the infraspinatus and the teres minor, and they are very big extroverts. You can think of them, they're like best friends. They go together everywhere. You can barely tell them apart. And they're extroverts because they both externally rotate the humerus. And since they're great friends, of course, they go to the same place together. They go to the greater tubercle of the humerus. So the greater tubercle you can think of is kind of like the cool spot, like the cool club. That's where all the cool kids are going. So you have the teres minor, infraspinatus, and even the supraspinatus all go to the greater tubercle. That's the cool spot. Again, the, the subscapularis uh, is a loner. He goes to the lesser tubercle all by himself. So one problem people have is remembering, well, is it the teres minor or the teres major that's considered part of the rotator cuff? And the easy way to remember that is that the teres major, you can think of him as a major in the military. He's overseas, he's going to battle, he's doing big things, he's not considered part of the rotator cuff. The teres minor, on the other hand, is still a minor. You know, he's a kid, he still wants to hang out with his friends, he wants to go to the great clubs like the greater tubercle, so yes, he is considered part of the rotator cuff. So now that we covered all those muscles, let's end up with the supraspinatus right up here. So supraspinatus, you can think of him as like the, the rich kid in school. He's living the high life. He's basically living in a penthouse suite on the scapula behind this big wall, the spinal scapula. And you can think of him, he wants everything elevated. He wants everything high up. So he inserts at the superior facet of the greater tubercle, okay? So he wants to go to the coolest spot on the shoulder, but he wants the highest spot of that greater tubercle as well. As for the action, since he wants everything high, he wants to live the high life, what he does is he elevates, or technically abducts, the humerus. Uh, so you can remember that everything's going up, everything's elevated, everything's kind of in the high life position for the supraspinatus. All right, that does it for the rotator cuff muscles. I hope it helped you out. As always, thanks for watching, and of course, good luck on your next test.